Huh. I don't know if it's my internet. Sorry, guys. I think my is slow. Abiri, we can't hear you. Unmute yourself. All right, welcome. Thank you so much, Bria, for correcting me. I guess we have to start all over, right? Bria didn't hear me the entire time. Right. Okay. All right. So we're going to start over, but just quickly, um, welcome again to another webinar. This is Dr. Azuma, I'm the host and founder of Healthy and Uplifted. I'm excited today as we talk about men fighting global equity um, globally. Um, today, this presentation is in collaboration with Love Your Menses, and I have my co-moderator, um, Bria Gatson, here. And um, sorry, my device was muted, and I didn't know, thanks to Bria, that you guys could not hear me. So um, before we get started, we were reviewing some housekeeping rules that... Um, you participating in this program allows us to use your voice, your name, and your comments for uh, media um, campaigning or campaign. And if you disagree, just send us an email. We also uh, wanted you to know that this is not a healthcare provider forum in a sense. So you, we still expect you to listen to your doctor or your provider. Most of us here in the medical field, but we're still not your personal provider, okay? It's just important that we get that out of the way. Lastly, in terms of the disclaimers, is the, um, the views languages expressed by the keynote speakers might not necessarily reflect um, that of healthy and uplifted.
next. Just quickly, um, we've done our welcome remark. We've done our housekeeping rules. We're going to do our reflection. Then I'm going to introduce you to my amazing speakers who will then wrap up and just do a quick vote of thanks. That's basically the schedule for today. All right, in terms of um, reflection, what does menstrual equity mean? I'm sure Bria Gatsin will talk about what menstrual equity means. James and Solomon will also join us in that conversation. Has your period come when you least expected? Like you traveled and you had your period? Um, for those that don't have what we call dysmenorrhea, painful period, what did you do? What about your siblings? Did it happen to them? Or your partner, did it happen to her? The next reflection, do you always pack or carry a period? Some people call it period in the United States, but in um, globally, some people call it menstruation. Do you always pack a period emergency kit in your purse? Do you? All right, I'm gonna quickly introduce our speakers. I'm excited, 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 excited. Bria Gatsi knows that I always embarrass her but I love this person so much. She's made me a better person. You know, I've come to conclude in life that there are different types of different modality to family. There's a family that you're born with. There's a family that you marry into for those that get married. And then there's a family that you create. I believe Brea Gatson is that family that Love Your Menses has created for me. James is that family that Love Your Messes has created for me. Solomon is that family that Love Your Messes has created for me. Natasha is that family that Love Your Messes has created for me. Noble is that family that Love Your Messes has created for me. Fluency is that family. Like we really love each other. We're just fortunate. And you know, I don't know if you guys see my shirt. I was gonna change this shirt, but something told me not to because I'm blessed to have such amazing family, people that have my back, people I have their back. So it's just a pleasure to introduce to you guys. You guys know Bria Gatson, she's very, very well known, but it's, it's very important for me to introduce this young woman. She's the smartest young woman that I know. So Ms. Bria Gatson, she is the co-founder and she is our amazing executive director, again, executive director of Love Your Menses. Her enthusiasm is centered around wellness. It drove her to create community-based programs that promote menstrual equity in black and brown communities nationally and internationally. In partnership with community members, Priya wants to break period taboo. She's doing that through community conversation, menstrual education, and resource con connection. Love Your Menses, which is a nonprofit, was founded in 2019 in response to the grow, growing wellness needs presence in communities, especially communities of color. The mission of Love Your Menses in Pat is to create a safe and uplifting and empowerment space for the youth to love their menses and also to have a healthier body image. So join me in welcoming Bria. The next person I'm going to introduce is Mr. James Gateri. James is our program manager in Kenya. He's amazing. He's a community development specialist, a life skills coach, corporate trainer, and a team leader at Africom Development Center. Africom Development Center is a grassroots initiative in Kenya that promotes community empowerment, sustainable development. He is the program manager for Love Your Menses Kenya. He's a menstrual wellness and equity champion, and he's a leadership and governance expert. He has 12 years of particip participatory learning and action, agriculture and livelihood, project cycle management, participatory participatory monitoring and evaluation. Sorry, my skin went blue. All right. So thank you um, for being here. The next person we're going to introduce is going to be Solomon. The 
let's try this again. Solomon is our project manager for Love Your Menses Liberia. Solomon is the founder and executive director of the Youth and Social Environment Impact in Liberia. He has nine years of experience collaborating with community leaders to create volunteer projects within the community. This project focuses on recruiting youth to partake in self-initiative activities through his NGO as a communicator, mobilizer, and task force team. Youth and Social Environmental Impact, Inc. aims to create community initiative geared towards health and sanitation, youth capacity building, and youth development. His menstrual equity projects will provide adolescent girls with menstrual pads and healthcare conversation in Monserrado, Bagibi, Bomi, and Grand Bassa. We are excited to have Solomon join us. Now we're going to begin our presentation by handing it over to Bria Gatsin. Bria Gatsin, you get it. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Izzy. Thank you so much, Dr. Azuma, for welcoming me into this space. It's so nice to be with you all to talk about men for menstruation. I'm so excited to talk a little bit about Love Your Menses and the work that we do and lead into these amazing men who are menstrual equity advocates in their communities. Um, so I will share my slides uh, so that way it will be easier for me to um, navigate. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, Barry, can you add? Do you see the slides in the? Oh, okay. Thank you. Awesome. So uh, we already, uh, uh, Dr. Zuma already kind of <laughs> talked about this, but um, before we begin, it's important to note that. Menstruation is not a disease or illness. It is a natural bodily process that many people experience, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. The more we can talk about menstruation and have a healthy dialogue, the more we can break the period stigma. And whether you are someone who has a period or not, we need you in this movement. So as I'm going through the presentation, uh, we would love for you to answer the following question in the chat. How can men become menstrual equity advocates? Um, so please ha um, brainstorm ways that men can get involved in this movement. So what is menses? Menses is the time of menstruation. Um, a lot of people, well, when they come across our organization name, they have questions about what menses actually is. Um, so to love your menses means to be in tune with your menstrual cycle, to advocate for equitable resources and safe space to menstruate, to support other people who menstruate, and most importantly, to flow through life unapologetically. So, so menstrual health is a public health and humans right, human rights issue. Every month, did you know that 1.8 billion people across the world menstruate? Menstruation is increasingly recognized as an issue in domestic and global public health. Um, because menstrual cycles have not stopped throughout the coronavirus pandemic, in fact, period poverty, which is the inability to afford menstrual products, has increased as job insecurity, homelessness, and food insecurity continues to rise globally. So there is a growing menstrual equity movement across the country and worldwide to not only end period poverty, but to also address menstruation education and to ensure that girls and women and all people who menstruate have access to the resources they need to have healthy menstrual cycles. So what is period trauma? So period trauma is any sustained psychological, social, or emotional injury or distress related to or caused by menstruation. Unfortunately, um, women, particularly women of African descent, 
um, are disproportionately affected by reproductive health conditions such as fibroids and endometriosis. In fact, endometriosis is a common reproductive health condition that um, oftentimes is misdiagnosed or it takes a really long time for someone to be properly diagnosed with the disease. And due to the high prevalence of pain, discomfort, bleeding, many um, Black menstruators are socialized to underreport period issues and suffer silence. I'm hearing an echo, so if everyone can mute themselves, that would be great. Thank you. Um, when girls especially uh, experience pain or discomfort, this can oftentimes lead to one to two missed days of school per month, which can account for nine to 18 missed days of school per year. So it's really important for us to address the period trauma. So in terms of men and menstruation, I wanted to highlight some unhelpful dialogue that people have noticed um, uh, in their daily lives. Um, so I've pulled some quotes um, from Twitter and other um, you know, things that I've even experienced. Um, so one person said, when I was 11 and he was 14, my brother asked me if periods happen on the weekends too. When I said yes, he just shook his head and said, I'm sorry. So that's not really helpful. Um, he probably didn't know about menstruation because it's not like you get your period on Monday through Friday and then the weekends you don't. That's not how uh, menstruation works. Um, some people will say you must be on your period because you have an attitude. Um, and that's awful, also unhelpful dialogue. Um, whether or not you're on your period, that should especially men shouldn't equate an attitude of menstruation. Another thing people will say is just take a pill and you'll be fine. Um, there's a lot that men don't know about menstruation and and how deep the pain can be. And, and taking a pill sometimes will not alleviate symptoms. And nor should that be, you know, someone's only option. And then um, sometimes men will say, well, I can't buy pads or tampons for you. Some men will even not even want to touch a pad or a tampon that's wrapped or even look at it. And so we have a lot of work to do to destigmatize menstruation. And we can start by having healthy dialogue associated with periods. So what can we do? As um, men, you can um, make sure that you learn about reproductive health um, and share your knowledge with others, um, as well as sharing resources in the community and getting the youth involved and um, incorporating STEM into menstrual equity. So about Love Your Menses. So Love Your Menses was started in 2019 in response to the growing menstrual wellness needs of adolescents. Um, since then, we have became a global organization, ensuring that we dispel myths surrounding menstruation, promoting menstrual equity, and building the next generation of leaders. Um, so that way all girls, women, and people who menstruate can learn about the menstrual cycle and create innovative public health solutions. We are currently located in seven countries um, and we're so excited to have um, a team that speaks as the collective over seven languages. Um, and one thing that we are committed to is ensuring that language is never a barrier to someone accessing um, menstrual health education. Uh, so I wanted to highlight some of the men who are involved in Love Your Menses. Um, Abraham is uh, our treasurer, AB. Uh, Dr. Frimpa Kudua is one of our board members. Solomon, uh, he oversees our work in Liberia, and you will hear him speak in a moment, as well as James, our partner in Kenya. Um, he leads the work um, being done in Kenya. So we are so excited to have men on our team who are committed to menstrual equity. Um, and this is just a picture of James, a, a man in action, um, doing the good work um, in Kenya, um, supporting girls and even boys, um, making sure that they have the menstrual education they need. 
Um, and here's another photo of uh, our partners in Dallas, Texas. And as you can see, oh, men were involved as well. I don't know what happened to the slides. Uh, Barry, can you see the slides? Can everyone see the slides? See the um, not yet. Ria, sorry, I don't know if it's my connection. I apologize. No worries. Can you add it back to the screen? Yes, ma'am. I will. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't understand. So in Dallas, yeah. uh, this man, um, he was really involved in our work uh, to support um, girls and women in Haiti who were affected by the most recent earthquake. So we love when men or young boys get involved in this movement. So how can men make an impact? There are different. There are many ways for men to get involved in menstrual equity. Uh, men can start by hosting a menstrual product drive in your community and also get educated on different types of products. Men can participate and a men for menstruation virtual training that's facilitated by mm -hmm. Love Your Menses. And men can also host period conversations among other men and women to continue breaking the period taboo. Um, also, men can download our app, Our Flow. Um, we are in the process of updating it and it should be available by the end of this month. So that is also another way to get involved is to share, use the app, um, learn about it and share it with other girls and boys so that way they can learn about menstruation. Although the app is uh, targeted towards girls and women and people who menstruate, um, men and boys can definitely uh, use the educational section to just to learn more about menstruation. Um, so stay tuned for our app. And um, men can also join our online community by following us on social media at Love Your Menses. Um, and they can continue supporting the work that we do by volunteering, mm -hmm. donating, or sharing our work on social media. And here are some really cool books that men can read to learn more about women's reproductive health. Um, there's a book that Dr. Azuma and I co-wrote called Maya Learns About Menstruation. It's a children's book, so dads can uh, read it um, and learn about menstruation. Um, and there's some really other cool books um, available. So um, a part of being a menstrual equity advocate for men is to learn about women's reproductive health. And that includes reading some really good books that are available. Um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you may learn more about Love Your Menses by visiting our website, loveyourmenses.com. And you can follow us on social media at Love Your Menses. And I'm so excited to have James and Solomon um, share about the work that they're doing. And thank you, Dr. Zuma and Latasha for creating this space. Thank you so much, Bria. Those were very amazing facts. I'm not surprised that you have a great presentation. Um, Love Your Menses has really helped us um, individually and even in our career. So thank you so much. So um, we're going to start with James. James, you're a man. Why did you join, you know, the menstrual equity space? Like, why? Like, as you know, as a menstrual equity advocate, it's really cool. But let me take off our hats and um, and see it as you know, as the regular yeah, community. You. It's like weird. Like why? Go ahead. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Bere. Uh, thank you, Brea, for that good pre uh, presentation. And uh, how are you, my friend uh, Solomon? I hope you're good. Uh, let me say. Uh, I think my my story dates back to when I was in Standard 5 in 1990. I had a very close uh, friend, and uh, God rest her soul in eternal peace. She passed on, and uh, she was very dear to me. And uh, I think uh, when we were in our second term, one day she just stood up, and I, I saw blood flowing uh, down her legs. I, I didn't understand what that is. At that time, can you hear me? Yes. At that time, 
talking about um, menses or even sex in our community was a taboo. And being a man who went through our cultural practice, especially during, during our moving from one stage to another so that I could become a warrior in my community, that was a subject you could not ask your mom or even your aunties. Mm -hmm. It was believed a man uh, should be a man and talk about man issues, taking care of the family, finding job, uh, bringing value uh, resources to the family, protecting the family and all that. And uh, as I grew up, I was more interested in the socioeconomic well-being of our people. I come from a political family. And I'm glad my dad um, started the conversation at one time when I asked and I couldn't hold it. And I, he was a doctor. So he started explaining things to me. And gladly, my mom came through for me because she was an, a trained nurse, though she, she, she was a practicing businesswoman. So that's when I started. I come from a family where I have no sisters. So mine is a very different story, Dr. Iberi. Uh, my mom was the only woman that I saw when I was growing up. And um, my grandmother is the woman who taught me everything I know about women. She taught me how to love, how to care, how to have feelings and how to be empathetic towards women emotions. And um, as I grew up, because I grew up in a town, I saw mostly people who are in the informal settlements uh, coming to my father's clinic. And I could really see how deep and how straining they were to access um, uh, health medical care. And uh, it's there that I started developing a passion uh, to enable women to access uh, medical care in the simplest and best way I could. And I can say um, I saw my mom uh, come in and uh, I saw her treat a lot of women free of charge, especially from the informal settlements, uh, giving them maternal care, uh, enabling them to access uh, quality nutrition. Those are the things that I still do today. But coming now to menses, I felt that um, this is something that the government, our government has neglected for the longest time, um, including um, the women representatives whom we have put in parliament through affirmative action, where they have seats which are not competent for by any man, but it's women's seats. And in the parliament, when they go there, nobody discusses about menses as a right for women. Because in our country, condoms are free. But a pack of, um, a pack of sanitary pads is very expensive. The least, or the most, the least expensive costs 50,000 shillings. That's almost $5. Um, very few women and ladies and girls in Kenya can afford that. And somebody had to step in for them. I have a daughter who is seven years old. And so I've seen through her eyes, especially when her time came. Uh, she's in class seven, not seven years old. She's now 13 years old. So this year she started uh, her menses. And I think it really isn't hard to see. This is what daddy does. So it was very easy for her to come to me and tell me and even invite her friends uh, in our house where we talk about it. So it's a privilege that I'm trying to extend to all the girls who do not have privilege or who are not uh, well informed about this. Wow. Thank you so much, Solomon, for that. That was amazing. Um, there are some key points, you know, um, that we've, we've heard today from you. The, the lack of menstrual pad availability in Kenya, you compared yeah. like if they can give free condoms, why can't they give free menstrual pads? You talked about how, I mean, your culture, a man is not supposed to talk about quote unquote women's issues. Well, you chose to talk about them. Um, you talked about really 
how there were there are some political positions in the Kenyan parliament for women. Once women are elected, they still neglect our important issues. So thank you so much for highlighting that. We're going to now travel all the way to Liberia and ask Solomon the same question. So Solomon, you're a man, a West African man. What makes you talk about menstrual equity? Thank you. And then after that, Bria is going to ask you guys some question. We will alternate then. Go ahead, Solomon. <clears throat> anyway, I'm so happy to be uh, on the show. I want to say thank you to Dadwazuma and Bria for bringing me this far. I'm so appreciative. I'm so happy because um, I have really, really looked for ways so I could appear on the show. I could express my interest uh, in menstrual hygiene. So um, in 2010, I went to my mother back uh, in the village. Uh, there's a public school there. And I saw some students. You get me, Claire? Yes, Hello? we can hear you well. Thank you. OK. In 2010, I went back to my mother's village. And I went to the public school to visit. So I saw a girl in the bathroom. So I, I actually went in the bathroom and saw this girl. So she was like hiding uh, from the instructors, from fellow students. So I decided to ask, why are you hiding? And she couldn't explain to me. So that's how I called one of the instructors. So I called one of the instructors and he came and asked her. So it was like, um, she was hiding it. It was like she was ashamed to tell me what, what's going on. So, I mean, they called a the female teacher, and that's how the student confessed to her that she had received, she saw her menses. So, mm -hmm. and actually, hello. Yeah, we are hearing you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, she confessed to that uh, female teacher, she said she saw her menses. But what really moved me to get interested in menstrual hygiene is this. I mean, there is no sanitary part. So I saw this uh, teacher carrying cloth to her so that she could manage and go home. So I decided to ask the teacher, is there any uh, part in this area? He said, there is no way. In fact, what, a question I'm asking was why this Lady decided to hide herself in the bathroom. He said, because she's shame. And that thing is nothing that we can discuss uh, among men. It's nothing that we can discuss among children. So I was, I was shocked. And then I went back to my mother and I saw some children. Even my mother herself, I mean, hiding when she adequately saw her message. So I have been really, really concerned why. This girl should, should be um, hard in itself. I mean, this, this thing is something that is um, it's kind of a nature. It's not something like, uh, uh, um, how, do we put, how do I put it? It's, it's, it's not something like where people, how do I put it? It's, You're this doing is good. nature. <laughs> You're doing good. Mm -hmm. huh? I see you doing so, good. Uh, it's I not something to have. Okay, so uh, it is not something to have for anybody, a thing that you should express, a thing that people should know about and, and help you and teach you. So that's how I came back to town. I decided to put this, my brain to work. I decided to uh, organize a group. First, a need will concern you for development. And we started to work in the community. We decided to write an uh, NGO. We decided to write an uh, official. We explained my dream why we need help. We need help to go by the village to help our people. Hello? Yeah, wow. Wow, yeah. that is yeah. so. Yeah. so so uh, when I came back, when I came back to, to town, we put the spring to work and we decided to, um, how do you call it, write people, write NGO, write common officials, write other permanent people within the community. And 
they were not giving you no alcohol. I'm so I'm sorry this is my first time appearing on this show. So I'm sorry this is my first time. So you gotta forgive me, please. So that's how we yeah, that's how we started working in the community. We started working and I decided that we shouldn't just work um in the city, but should, we should take this brain, this dream to the villages. Because what we experienced is that in the villages, um menstrual policy has affected uh, social, cultural, and religion restriction, which are which is a big barrier in the path of menstrual hygiene management. So we decided to organize this thing in school, meaning where we have a vulnerable and a rich school where people don't know about menstrual hygiene, but they don't know about how to use a sanitary pad in a proper way. So um no matter when we go into these places, we open that workshop and we explain to them how does it use a sanitary part. And that's how we've been working. Wow, that is so amazing. I don't know if um, our audience see a similar pattern between Solomon and also James. Um, Solomon goes to teach in a rural area he goes into, he sees a girl, a student not wanting to leave the restroom because she was ashamed of her menstruation. I don't know if Bria can come on live, but Bria, um, why do you think people have so much shame with their menstruation? I don't know if Bria is there. Bria, why do you think people have shame in their menstruation? If Bria doesn't come up, um, I would ask ask you Solomon that question. okay Bria is here so Bria thank you why is there so much shame you see what um you see what they said like James and Solomon shares the story of like shame like me and you we don't have shame talking about menses like we carry our shirt and our logo love your menses so what do you think Bria and then you can ask the next question um I don't know uh I think just because people don't really talk about it publicly. Um, you know, people have been menstruating since the dawn of time, but it always has been something that someone just like, deals with internally. Um, and there's never a lot of conversations about menstruation. Um, and so because of that, um, there's this shame because people don't know there are other people also experiencing the same thing. Um, and, you know, even with like puberty, uh, girls and boys go through puberty. Sometimes they think they're the only ones developing these uh, bodily changes because they're not talking about it with their peers or their parents aren't educating them until they realize that, oh, wait, I'm not the only one. There's also other uh, young girls and boys going through the same thing as I am. Um, and so the more aware people are that they aren't alone, the more, the less shame that they have realizing that it is normal um, and it's something that many other people also experience. And so the more people can embrace it and have those conversations, the more comfortable people will feel um, um, internally and in, in how they deal with what they're going through. Um, and I have to ask the next Thank question. You, Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, yes, Noble, it's important to teach preteens about menses. You're right about that. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, I guess James and Solomon. So what have you, know, besides you, there are other men also uh, in the menstrual equity movement. So what other men have you noticed doing exceptional things and um you know what more can can men do okay um in my country i have not seen any men ready to really engage into menstrual hygiene management but the thing is we have to do more we have to teach our fellow men that's why when I go to school, I always um, gather students of both girls and boys and teach them. 
and at times we get them come down and we get a sanitary pad. So we explain to them why, why we are giving even condom to them. And we explain to the girls why they should use a sanitary pad in a proper way. Thank you um, for sharing. James? Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. Um, I think, um, you, you know, men, especially in Kenya, play a critical role in the growth of their daughters. Uh, whether you're an, a father, an uncle, a brother, or even a male neighbor, because here we still have uh, culture plays a very critical part of our growing up. And um, I feel if, for example, the fathers and the uncles uh, and even the brothers took the role of um, menstrual education significantly as they take the role of um, circumcision, especially for the men, then this is something that can be uh, that can be brought at the household level. And it's something that can be introduced to the mm -hmm. girls at a very young age. And therefore, it's easy for them to accept them because they look up to the men. They look up to the brothers, especially the firstborn brothers and the uncles and the fathers. They lead the way. What they say is almost sacred truth here in Kenya, and especially in the rural areas. So where the men can um, can can take up that role and take it passionately and um, make it part of their menu in the house especially for the young girls it could work allow me maybe to sound this in some of our rural areas especially in Tharakanidhi, where our organization is based we have a few areas where female genital mutilation is practiced and uh, as we speak every holiday especially now we are coming to the easter holidays we shall have over uh over slightly over 100 girls uh, getting the cut and in december holidays we have a triple digit so that's an experience that we're trying to change we're trying to change the conversation through alternative rites of passage, which we call ARP, uh, in collaboration with the churches and in collaboration with the fathers, especially fathers who are keen to take their girls for FGM. Uh, it's a tall order. We're trying. Uh, we're calling on the government. Uh, it takes time, but it will happen. James got in. We will get another James and another one. Wow, Priya, that's an interesting um, conversation. Female, female um, genital mutilation. Maybe that could be a project that we can help you, James, Bria, if that's okay with you, and have that yeah. conversation, you know, in Kenya about that. Like, you know, menstrual education, including, you know, the, the what would we call anatomy of female, right? I didn't realize, Bria, that, that about a hundred girls get the mutilation that's pretty pretty sad but thank you james for your work um james um my question for you is you, you we talk about culture right we talk about how the culture in kenya and also in liberia does not allow men to talk about mutual equity and your work and um and solomon's work in like changing that the question is how can we um use culture to promote menstrual equity? Like what should we do to use that same culture to promote menstrual equity? James? Uh, that's a wonderful, thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Iberi. That's a wonderful question. Um, you see, culture is the, is, is the, is the base. It's the, mm -hmm. uh, it, it is what makes us who we are. Even as we go through education or religion, culture plays a critical role. My name, uh, Gitari, is a cultural name. Uh, I, um, my understanding and my undertaking on this is that if 
we are able mm. to educate people about what um, to understand more about uh, women biological happenings. I don't know what other word I could give it, doctor, mm. <laughs> um, about the mm. woman biology and help them understand that the that menstruation is a right for a woman just like we look at a right for a man to get inheritance and this is more right for her because it is by birth it is not um it is not by man creation it is by god's creation and it is even more important because this is also what signifies her ability to give to bring forth other generations and therefore if we give her adequate resources during her menstruation if we give her more knowledge of this and if we support her with the resources that we have at the household level then this could work politically it is maybe um, encouraging and supporting the government the government is trying but it is not really doing it as much as it needs to be so that the government through affirmative action could come in and create very specifically subjects in school where our girls and our boys can go through we have biology yeah. we have social education inside there we could have um very particular topics on menstrual hygiene menstrual education everything for them to understand about what is menstruation then i think we could have a crop of young boys and young girls who grow up to support this so if we could have more support from the religious leaders from the um what i call clan leaders we have them in kenya the clan leaders where we can have maybe um uh, the houses or the homes which are led by men the men accepting to educate to be educated more on the menstruation and even politically getting the political support i think that could happen but uh dr bere allow me to say this that Mm -hmm. our culture is ingrained in our hearts especially here in kenya uh we have we still trying to support the women you saw the other day one of our presidential candidates nominating a woman as a running mate which is a step forward if we could have more women supporting women in this then i think it it would be very easy for the men to come in Wow, deep man. More women supporting women. That is amazing. I definitely agree with you. And that's why I love your menses is a very strong organization. Bria Gatson supporting me, me supporting um, you know, Latasha. You know, it's just beautiful. You're right. When we work together for a common goal, we can do mighty work. I definitely agree with you. Solomon, what's what's your take? Uh, we've heard James talk about how we can change culture and use it to promote menstrual equity. What's your take? And then I'm going to hand it back to Bria. <coughs> yeah. Um, so actually what we can do, for the past month, we went to a Muslim community where we want to work because uh, they actually don't discuss uh, their menstrual hygiene. So we we went there and first we we met the uh, the leader of that community and we sat with him and we educated him again that this thing is not just about the women but men have been for men because um in the muslim community once female are seeing a message they are like uh, how do i call it Oh, cash. So they don't cook. They don't cook. They stay away. And they look like they are polluting the community. They stink. That's how they consider those who send the message. So we're able to explain to that 
to the big man of the uh, of the town, and he reasoned with us, and we called men and women together and students. That's how we were able to discuss the message. And they were so appreciated. And they even told us to go back at any time we should go back and have more discussion with the with them. That is that that is amazing. That's amazing. Back to Bria. And then we're gonna wrap up. Mm -hmm. Um mm. I guess in terms of the boys, um, you know, the work that Love Your Mentors does is providing education mainly for girls. Um, but what are your thoughts on providing menstrual education for boys and how can we get boys engaged in the conversation without it being um, uncomfortable for them? That, that, that's who goes first, Neil Solomon. Hello, Solomon goes first. Yeah. Hello. Okay, I'll go. And Bria asks a very great question, Solomon. She said that love your menses. Uh, okay. We we started. Uh, can you hear me? Solomon, can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, I get you now. Yeah, yeah. Bria said, you yes. know, love your menses start focusing on girls. And with this conversation, we are, Bria is asking on behalf of love your menses that how can we provide a robust education for boys and how can we make that education less uncomfortable for them? So should we provide education for boys, one? And two, how can we make it less uncomfortable for them. So Solomon, you're going to answer that. Then we're going to have James um, end it, and then we're going to wrap up. Go ahead. Oh, sure. Um, we have to provide education for the boys because um, number, number one, they have a sister. And number two, they have a girlfriend. So one they're involved into, one they're educated, they were able to overcome um, the myth about menstrual hygiene. So um, how can we do that? By uh, organizing a workshop within the schools where we normally go there and organize workshop for them, call them and discuss with them and educate them. Wow, awesome, awesome, thank you. Um, James, please wrap up, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Let me say, I, I think uh, uh, Dr. Ber and Bria have reached out to you telling you that I'm not taking only a pad in school. I'm also taking a shaver. I'm taking some oil. I need to take some other things. And you're asking me for what? Um, in our program, we found it very necessary that where, as we go to educate uh, girls about pads, we invite the boys who are of their age. Um, and therefore, as we give the ladies the pads, the sanitary pads, we give the boys a shaver or even uh, the skin oil or even a soap so that we make them feel they are part of us and they are recognized. But um, more, uh, what is more important is breaking the myth and the stereotype that menstruation is dirty that menstruation is for girls or for women, that menstruation is something that you should not be involved in. And we try to break the myth by helping, um, having what we call um, a boy's talk. In our schools, when I go to the schools or when I go to the churches or even to the mosque or even under the trees or even in the hotels, we try to talk to boys alone and help them understand that one of the most beautiful gifts you can have is understanding that if you can support, understand, and be emotionally connected to your woman during her menses, then that is something that she can never forget about. Whether she is your sister, your auntie, your girlfriend, your wife, or even just a friend. And uh, 
we've seen over time um that kind of simple talking uh, men changing attitude including um trying to help or trying to um uh, i mean uh, what, i don't know what i can call it but it is um we try to attract men and when they go to the supermarkets to just look at the price tag and the different types of sanitary pulp that are sold just doing that they can bring that sanitary pad as a gift to their wives and they can start a simple conversation of when their period start when it ends how should i treat you when you during your menses um so that we don't we stop now the narrative of uh, you're having the attitude because you're in your menses you're behaving the way you're behaving your moons are swinging during your menses so that we stop all that and this is also by looking at our athletes kenya is blessed to have the best athletes in the world uh because when it's athletics time it doesn't matter whether you're in your menses or you're not you got to win that race so for me that's the simplest um uh example that i look at wow thank you again solomon james and my amazing partner bria for bringing this important dialogue um james you've talked on like the importance of men getting involved in menstrual education you talk about how educating men on menstrual education can make them more compassionate and loving to their partners to their daughters just understanding the menstrual physiology i really appreciate that um you guys i was really touched you know i, I thank you so much that talking about menstrual equity does not um demasculinize you guys as men you guys are still strong um james you touched on how your daughter brings her friends over to hear you talk about menstrual education it is so cool i think like bria will agree that's like one of the most amazing thing to hear a dad welcome his daughter's classmates and say let's talk about menstruation thank you for highlighting that if we want change and we for one menstrual equity we must ally our, um, align our efforts with men because men play an important role in our culture especially in the african culture so thank you so much i, I think bria and i will continue this conversation with you guys because this is eye opening we want equity and we know we can achieve it with amazing men and i think bria and myself we're going to go out and work on recruiting more men because like bria said when we first started we focused more on women and then we kept you know we expanded we had noble and the rest coming and then we realized that wow men can be the best ally so thank you thank you so much for proving to us that men are not um antagonistic towards our message we just need to find the right men thank you for being that right man i'm going to now switch gears and talk about healthy and uplifted community announcement we're going to be taking a break in june so that we can enjoy the summer and we're going to start our next webinar on july 17th again healthy and uplifted we just we just had that conversation that most people don't want to have but need to have so we're going to be talking about possibly how to divorce proof your marriage right we feel like divorce i don't know of kenya or liberia but in the united states divorce is really really high um so we want to see from people that have never had divorce or for people that have divorced before we want to see if it's possible right to divorce prove your marriage something about being a community health educator public health professional is we always ask the question we are always surprised when we hear the answer so save the date date july 17th all right you guys know i'm a coach um and i love coaching because it helps me become better um sarika um shares her experience working with me she said there were times where i felt unqualified and confused about my career path but dr azuma empowered me and constantly spoke live and truth into me at the end of our conversation i always left feeling so inspired i'll always be grateful for her mentorship and the things she's done for me i highly recommend dr azuma for life coaching 
Her guidance will help you through whatever you may be facing. So if you are one someone listening and you're in need of a life coach, please reach out to me. Um, I have so many strong people like Bria Gatsin, James Solomon, Latasha Noble. I have so many teams. Like if you need someone else to join in the coaching, I can reach out to one of them and we will just pour live into you. Like Bria said, love your menses. One of our mantra is to flow through life unapologetically. And really that's what we do. And that's what we try to teach others to do as well. All right, like Bria has said, um, we have a book called Maya Learns About Menstruation. It's a children's book, but for fathers wanting to learn about menstruation, this is a good, simple read. I think about five minutes, and it will just give you a, um, like a grand overview on menstruation so that you'll be able to become, hopefully, like James, and be able to educate your daughter and your partners about menstruation. There's another book that I co-wrote with some amazing women. We share about our immigrant experience. It's called the Warrior Women Project. Please pick it up. And then my first book ever, Jonathan and the Hole in His Shoes, a passionate book that talks against um, bullying for us to stand up like James does, like Solomon does, like Bria does, like Noble does. So we're very grateful. Again, Behind anything, there are people that work hard to make sure this programming um, continues. I have to give a great credit to our amazing intern, our future doctor, Ezra Walker. Ezra Walker is so amazing. She makes sure that this program is put on and goes through. So I thank you, Ezra. I thank you for Brianna. I thank you for Ethelene. I thank you for Noble. I thank you for Alpha and Latasha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. More importantly, I thank you for Bria Gatsinia. Bria doesn't appear on this webinar often, but it's because of her guidance we have this. She's the first person to work on our website. She's the one that has carried us through. So she's our silent hero. So Bria, I appreciate you. Thank you again, production team. This um, event has been sponsored again by Love Your Menses, Azuma Solution, Healthy and Uplifted, and Elevate Her Mind. Thank you again. You can find us at, on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, so check us out um, for previous episodes. Again, this is a good platform. I really like it. I might be biased, but objectively, I think this is very educational. Again, you can reach us on those platforms that we mentioned, or you can also reach us at info at healthyandoplifted.com or healthyandoplifted at gmail.com. All right, guys, thank you so much. Um, thank you again. We'll see you next time. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zuma. Thank yes, thank no you. problem. Thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Bye, -bye. bye everyone. Have a good afternoon, evening. Yeah, so.